Welcome back to the Family Movie Night Podcast, where we want to help your family have better conversations around the content you consume. This is episode 54, and happy Thanksgiving to all of you uh, who are listening to this. Probably not on Thanksgiving Day, but that's when this is releasing. I don't know. If we have some super fans out there that are just like, it's Thursday night, I got to listen, it's dropping today, we've been waiting uh, let us know. Let us know. We we would love to know and tell you um, to go hug your family on Thanksgiving instead. <laughs> yeah, like like write it in the comments. Be like family movie night super fan. There we go. I like it. I like it. But uh, today we are uh, talking about not one movie. Oh, not two movies. Not a trilogy of movies. But the only other uh, quadrilogy that I know of being the Alien quadrilogy. <laughs> We are now Which made. Isn't even a word. No oh, word. It's as much a word as trilogy is a word. I mean, it's very much a word because it sounded like a word. So therefore, it is now part of the lexicon. And all words are made up. So <laughs> why don't we just make them up anyway? It's made up uh, of letters. Yeah, yeah, maybe it's just not in this language, Sawyer. Yeah. yeah. Who knows? Gosh. Who knows? Yeah. But uh, yeah, so we have made it to all four Toy Story films by Pixar, and I'm excited to talk to the hero of our podcast. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to Woody himself, Donnie Dorsey, Tom Hanks, uh, killing it as as Woody, the hero. Uh, how are you feeling today, man? You excited to talk about Toy Story? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling, you know, I just want to let people know you got a friend in me. That's how this. That's how this goes. That's very good. And of course, we have the villain of our podcast, also Woody from every one of the Toy Story movies. No, no, <laughs> he, I'm Sid. I'm Sid. No, okay, no, no. Get it twisted. I am Sid. Sid, Sid is not I a. Look like Sid, okay? I'm Sid. I was Sid when I was a kid. I was grinding my little Aragorn action figures into the cement, okay? It was. I, I'm Sid. I, I will. I will die on this hill. Okay. You, you shouldn't, because the true villain of all of the movies is Woody. In every movie, he, the, the person they're trying to convince to get out of his own way is Woody. So uh, anyway, Sawyer, we know how you feel. I'm not interested in hearing the rest of this anymore. So let's move on to the mom of our podcast. Uh, Lori Metcalf from R Roseanne plays the mom in Andy's, uh, in, in, in Andy's life. Heidi Cooper, how are you doing today? Doing great, doing great. Just being a mom. Just being a mom. Live it. Live. That's, that's what I do. Okay. <laughs> you can't escape it. <laughs> Very good. But more importantly, you're the mom of this podcast and you're always keeping us in line. And I yes, appreciate exactly. it. We, <laughs> if things get out of line, Sawyer starts yelling about a, a character who is not a real person, <laughs> yet really feels connected to him. And uh, and I, I could just watch Heidi, just like a mom going, oh, that's sweet that he's so excited. <laughs> <laughs> Shake my head. Shake my head a little bit. There you go. Very good. But of course, uh, we're going to be talking about the Toy Story movies today. And we have a reason that we think ties great into uh, Thanksgiving and this kind of holiday season. But before we get to that, Donnie Dorsey, why don't you tell them what we do on this podcast? Yeah. So on this podcast, we encourage every family at Community Christian Church to have a monthly movie night to help you and your children build memories and start conversations that matter. The goal of our family ministry is to help you raise your children to love Jesus and his way of life above all other things. And we know that critical to that is for you to have routine, regular times of connection and shared experiences that will help you build stronger relationships. And uh, movie nights are great opportunities to do that because movies are not just easy ways to share laughter, joy fear and sadness and in a safe environment, but they also give us chances to talk about what matters most to us in ways that are meaningful and memorable with our children. And on this podcast, we want to not only recommend some movies you could watch on your monthly movie night, but give you some ideas of meaningful conversations you can have with your ch children during or after the movie. And as always, the point of this podcast is not to add one more thing to your to-do list as parents that you then will feel guilty about if you don't get it done, but it's just to create opportunities for you to spend, spend time together with your kids and you can build memories and hopefully have conversations. So today, throughout our conversation, we just want you to remember that we want you to have fun and help you th think through simple and easy ways to share your love of Jesus with your kids. And so today we actually have four great movies that we think will help you do that. And I'm actually going to challenge you at some point over the holidays. Watch all four of these films. 
Now I'll get to that later, but you, you're just doing yourself a favor if you watch all four of these movies. But you don't have to worry because each of us watched a uh, different Toy Story movie uh, and are going to be talking about that a little later in the podcast. But before we get to uh, what I'm just going to call kind of our, our 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 gushing nerd fest at the end of this uh, podcast. We're just going to kind of nerd out about how great the Toy Story movies are. I actually want to start with our themes for today and talk a little bit about really what is kind of the overarching theme of all the Toy Story movies, which is, um, if you don't know this, the toys themselves are kind of a family unto themselves. Uh, and uh, they kind of act as uh, the parents uh, in their relationship towards the children that they were given to. Uh, so Andy, in this case, is uh, the the owner of these toys, but he almost kind of works as the ch the child of all the toys. They are looking out for his good. They are very concerned with hi uh, him. But at the same time, there is all this, I would say in all four movies, one of the constant themes is just anxiety. <laughs> just the anxiety of relationships. The fear that maybe this person I love more than anything else, maybe they don't love me as much as I love them. And maybe one day they will dispose of me uh, and, and and get rid of me and I'll have to move on. And each of the movies is really about these kind of changing periods in the child's life, but really the life of this family. So in the very first Toy Story movie, there's this kind of family ecosystem that exists and it's a, it's a straight up uh, hierarchy and Woody is at the top of the hierarchy, uh, emperor of the toys, and uh, kind of gets knocked off of that when Buzz Lightyear shows up. And it kind of serves as, hey, now there's this new cool toy in the family. And maybe it's, you know, a step parent or, or maybe it's a younger sibling has now kind of come in and it has changed the dynamics of what's going on. And Woody has to learn how to live with that. In Toy Story 2, Andy's getting older and he's not as interested in playing with toys. And it's kind of that age in a family's life where the teenager is not as interested in the parents and the parents start freaking out. What if one day they're just done with me and, you know, my cute little kid wanted to come talk to me all the time and now they don't want to talk to me anymore and they're not telling me anything and they're hiding things from me and he's got to figure out how do I navigate that. The third movie, Andy's going away to college and the toys have to figure out, are we just going to go retire and live? <laughs> live at the daycare and uh, do that whole thing. And they end up moving on to kind of help another kid. And it's like this grandparenting stage. And then the fourth movie is uh, they're with this new family. And the new change that's coming in is what he's kind of deciding is my whole life just parenting or is it something else? Is there the sunset years for me and Bo Peep and that whole thing? So if you haven't seen them, that's basically the outline of all four movies and kind of the changing dynamics. Now, the themes that I want uh, us to talk about out of this is in kind of miniature, those movies are kind of the shapes our families take. And Thanksgiving end up all Thanksgiving, Christmas, holidays end up being these times where we become very aware of the changing dynamics of our families right? That we get into a place and things are changing. Maybe someone has passed away and there's just a new mood this Christmas, or maybe there's a divorce in the family, or maybe it's a, a really good thing. Maybe there's a new person coming into the family. You have uh, children or cousins or someone who they're, they're having spouses come into the family or new babies in the family or a, a, some teenagers bringing their boyfriend or girlfriend and the dynamics of the family change. And what always happens when dynamics changes People freak out. It's anxiety. And so we want to talk about how do we talk as a family about learning to embrace what's different and what's changing and all those different kind of things because sometimes at Thanksgiving that can happen. So who wants to jump in here and just talk about this idea of like how family dynamics change and sometimes that can cause anxiety and insecurity within us? I, I can... Oh, go ahead, Heidi. Go ahead. <laughs> we defer. H Heidi, I defer to Heidi. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm afraid she's going to send me to my room. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sawyer, don't interrupt adults. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Go no. back to the kids' table, yeah. Sawyer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no dessert before dinner, Sawyer. <laughs> uh, very good. Very good. Anyway, uh, go ahead, Heidi. What were you Yeah, doing? no, I think like it's just something that. Um, like that change, the changes that you're talking about, like, I totally have seen that in my family, like all the different ones, you know, throughout my adult life. And I think it is, um, it's hard, but I think that the thing that I try to remember is that, um, it, this is also short and like change is a guaranteed thing. Mm, and so, good. 
it's like, if I can like adapt and try to approach this with the best possible, like, um, you know, uh, uh, energy or attitude or however you want to kind of describe it, but just like a positive outlook on like, all right, well, you know, not anticipate anything. (laughs) Um, cause I tend to be like anticipating things that may not even, this is the end of the whole family. Yes, exactly. (laughs) Yes. We're done. Yeah. And so like, you know, if you get too many people like that in a room, like then we just, we just have blown everything up before, before yeah. like we've even had hors d'oeuvres or whatever you start with, you know, before the, the beers are even popped or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, I think it's just kind of like, it's a, it's an inevitable thing. And I've found that as often as it can be a bad thing, it usually often doesn't turn out that way. And it, you know, tends to be a good thing. And if we're open to it. So I think that's probably like, the biggest thing that I've learned about changes in a family is like, you know, we've had a lot of that and it just, it, it always works out. Things always, you know, come together eventually. And yeah, people are always going to disagree, but it's a, you know, it's a, it's a positive thing to just, you know, we talked about on the last episode to just be together, be honest with each other and, you know, respect each other first. Yeah. Well, and I, so here's what one thing I heard you say, Heidi, I thought was great. And I just want to echo here is, Teaching our kids that change is constant, that everything is changing all the time and being able to just say to our kids, that's normal and change by its nature, na- nature is kind of neutral. Uh, it, it is not necessarily good or bad. It is what we bring to it in our attitude. And so the second thing that I would say, and I heard Heidi say this too, and I just want to echo this is teaching our kids what you can control and what you can't control. You can't control this change but you can control your attitude. You can control your outlook. And so that's true with everything, whether it's something as tragic as grief, right? And my kids, my kids are, you know, at that age where they're kind of getting anxious about that, right? You know, my mom has had several skin uh, cancer surgeries and every time they're like, is mom all going to be okay? And what's going to, you know, what does that mean if, if I don't get to see my, and all that and being able to say, it'll be sad and it'll be hard. You can't control what happens, but you can control the way that you approach it, right? So I think that's you. Or even if it's changes that are good, but sometimes are scary, you know, there's a new person in the family, there's a new situation in the family, there's a new tradition, and it's a little scary because it's not the same being able to say, like Heidi said, uh, most of the time, if you handle it the right way, the change actually ends up being a good thing. And the change doesn't mean the thing that came before was bad. Just means that now there's a new thing. And that's a lot of complex emotions to talk a kid through because it's a lot of complex emotions for a 30-something year old to deal with, but it's important. Hi, yeah. Marie- and I think one thing you were saying, like, you know, a change being neutral. I think one thing that I try to encourage my kids to see is that don't classify something like a change that's being made. Don't classify it as good or as bad because, you know, there's lots of kids who a new baby might be seen as a bad thing, but there's lots of other reasons why it will eventually be a good thing for them. Obviously grief, a loss of a loved one, you know, that absence of their presence um, when you do get together and and it's that much, you know, more stark. I think even in that there are positives, things that you can look for, like different relationships develop and you connect in different ways that maybe weren't possible if there was like kind of a, you know, the situation just changes. And so I think that, you know, like you said, they, the changes most of the time are pretty neutral, but don't classify them ahead of time. Don't get an idea of what is a good change or a bad change because usually we're wrong. (laughs) Yeah. Just, just embrace it. You know, one of the, yeah, yeah, just embrace it as this is what is now. Yeah. And like you said, it's also temporary. So there's another change coming along the way. I say that to my kids all the time. I get you may not like this right now. And this may even be, what's happening may even be bad. Like it may be painful. It may be whatever, but that also will pass at some point and a new yeah. thing will come. And what you said, I think that's huge is being able to say that. And, you know, even with something like grief, because like my daughters have, and I've, I've heard this, this month is adoption awareness month. And so we see a lot of stuff come through, but what a lot of people forget is there's a lot of joy and beauty and adoption often. but adoption is this like continuing grief that never really goes away because it changes as you get older of this person, these people, and may sometimes entire families, right? That are out of your life. And so what we try to say to our kids a lot is, you know, the fact that you are sad about this, the fact that you're grieving about this 
it is a sign of how much you love these people. Like grief is, and I mean, I don't quote Marvel movies a lot, but it's actually a really good one where Vision says in the TV show WandaVision, what is grief but love persevering? Like that is just true. That grief is just, it shows how much I love this. And so sometimes we see the grief and I, I miss them and I feel this and I see that as a bad feeling I want to get away from. But if you instead choose to say, well, that's how I'm feeling today. And I'm going to see that as love. Man, I love that person so much. I love them. I love them. And that's and love is a good and beautiful thing always, even when it's sad, even when it's sad. So I think that's great. Now, Sawyer, we've cut you off enough. Uh, it's time. It's time now that we have to listen. I'm going to take my headphones off. And when you're done, just raise your hand. <laughs> and I, I, I'm just I, I was kidding. actually just going to say the kind of similar to the attitude thing. You know, I'm I'm kind of entering that chapter of life where there's a lot of change that's going on and stuff like that. Um. And, uh, and, you know, like I'm, I, this is going to be my first Thanksgiving where I'm not with, uh, anyone in my family. And yeah, that, that is a, a, uh, scary kind of sad moment, but also, um, uh, fun and adventurous and stuff like that. And I think like that can be the thing whenever it comes to like change. Cause like we had like little changes whenever I was a kid and my parents always did a good job of making it, even if it wasn't like a great thing that happened. They did a great job of making it feel of, of making the new of it feel like an adventure almost. Right. Um, and that might be a little bit dependent on your kids and stuff like that. And sure. how they, they react to the concept of unknown and stuff like that. But my parents did a good job of getting us ready for all that kind of stuff by raising us in ways that change is not inherently bad, um, yeah. but that it's inherently change. Change is just change. Yeah. You know, let's see what's going to happen and then we'll figure out if it's good or bad and stuff like that. So, well, and really being able to say the only thing that's not helpful is holding on to, and I'm not saying holding on to the past and like memories, but holding on to your expectations from the past, yeah, holding on like, to, I thought my life was going to be like this. I thought yeah. this was going to be like this. That is never a healthy and helpful way because then you can't embrace the people that you're with now, you know, yeah, in a loving yeah. way. Yeah, you want your kids to be able to be in the moment is the thing. Right. And if they're so focused on, well, last year we did this and two years ago we were doing this. Why'd we do that and stuff like that? They're not yes. even like I, I think when it comes to the holidays, you know, for the longest time my my family would go to uh we, we would have Thanksgiving with our family, like our extended family. Um and that just eventually got to the point where that wasn't going to be feasible anymore. And we had to start doing something on our own. And, uh, and you know, the thing is, I, I, at first I was very like, this is going to be an awkward Thanksgiving instead of like 20 people, there's only going to be six of us. And honestly, we did that for three years. And those are some of my favorite Thanksgivings looking back on it. Like, yeah, it, it's those, it's those moments of unknown that can produce the, the most like ingrained memories in your kids. Well, and I think that thing of living in the moment's really good, Sawyer, of being able to say like, you know, the problem is when I hold on to the past, which grief often draws me back into the past, which once again, grief is not bad, but this idea of I'm going to hold on to, I thought my life was going to be like this. I thought they were still going to be here. I thought this thing was going to happen. I'm living in the past. But as Heidi said earlier, this anticipation is me living in some imagined future. And so I'm not going to enjoy this moment because it's not the way I thought it was going to be in the past. Or I'm not going to enjoy this moment because it's going to be bad in the future. And choosing to be able to teach our kids, but this moment right now is good. Like this moment right now, because we're together and we love, and even you're sad, but you get to talk to someone about that. You're scared and there's someone here to cuddle you while you're scared. Like, you know what I mean? Like being able to say that to our kids, Heidi, it looks like you want to say yeah. something. Yeah, no, I was just going to say like the thing that I feel like I've, I've recognized um, like in you know, changing dynamics, lots of, you know, loss and, and changes. Um, I think one of the, the biggest benefits is that I know that I have the rest of my life to grieve for my mom, for my sister, you know, for, for any, any people that I love that I've lost, but I won't get those moments back. Yeah. So I can choose, you know, the one thing that was very freeing for me is like, when, you know, someone is not in your life any longer, especially through that, you know, through a, something like death is you can, you know, you can know that they, that on their end, like 
there's no issue in the relationship. So right. you just, you just process your stuff as you, as you may, you know, have space for it. And I think that's the thing that a lot of times people kind of get lost in grief and it's so easy to, it's so heavy, but you can get lost in it. And then you're missing things that are actually, you know, you, you won't, you won't get those opportunities back because you're right. so focused on what you had that was good and it was great and you loved it. But, you know, for me, my baby was a month old when my mom passed away. If I had imagine what I would have missed, you know, like yeah, if that right. could have been the only thing I could see. Um, I could, and I still miss stuff, you know, I still prioritize things wrong and I can look back now and see that. But, but I also know that one thing I was grateful for was that I had people pointing me back to right now. Right. And yeah, I think that's like, Thanksgiving gratitude. Like we all struggle with our family. My Thanksgiving is going to look totally different this year. And it's been that, you know, it's been like the constant, like, all right, now we figure out what this is going to look like because there's been so much change. But I think that's the thing about Thanksgiving is like, if we don't do it any, if we choose to look at the negative every other day of the year, at least on Thanksgiving or the days surrounding it, maybe we take that opportunity to say, Hey, I'm going to focus on what is really good today. And if we can do that and also be with our families or extended families or anything, I can almost guarantee that there will be positives that we can take away from it and say like, wow, you know, this was definitely different, but it was really good. And I, I have to be one that kind of reflects back on those. As soon as I like leave the experience, I look back at it and try to remind myself, what were some good things I saw there? What were some positive things that, you know, maybe wouldn't have happened if the dynamic was, the way it used to be. So, yeah. Well, and I think, and so here's kind of where I want to wrap it up because I think what Heidi, you said there is huge and that's great advice. And I think it's a practical thing we can do. And so I just want to uh, leave it on this. I know for our family uh, ministry, our parenting ministry, the assignment that we're kind of given to uh, families at uh, Thanksgiving time was to sit around uh, and not just say what you're thankful for, but say what you're thankful for about Jesus. Because one thing that's really important for us in teaching our kids to love Jesus and his way of life is to say, change is constant. People change, families change, but Jesus never changes. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And the good thing to be able to say to them is, and this is what's great, is Jesus so big that he doesn't change, but he goes with you everywhere you change. And so it seems sometimes like Jesus is changing for you. Like it almost, he isn't, but it's your perspective when you're a kid. And I had this moment where I realized that the other day, there's this Psalm, Psalm 90 that I've uh, memorized. And the beginning of it says, uh, Lord, through every generation, from generation to generation, uh, you have been our dwelling place. And when I think of every time when I hear that is, I think about, I remember, I remember being about five or six and just, I remember what it felt like to pray in my bed as I was going to sleep and feeling like Jesus was holding me. And I remember what it was like to be a teenager. And at that point, it felt like God was speaking to me through like worship songs we would have and sermons that we've had. And I've I've thought about the times that my wife and I have gone through difficult things or really scary things. And it felt like God was there. And I just think about Jesus was the same, but I experienced him differently. And so for you to be able to, as a family, sit down and say, hey, this Thanksgiving Maybe there are some things that are different. You know, holidays are really complicated for my family. And that was something that was never true. Holidays used to be simple for me. I grew up, I didn't have a lot of extended family nearby. So when I grew up, it was just me, my parents, and my brothers. And that's how we did every Thanksgiving, every Christmas. And for some people, that's really sad. I loved it. I loved it. It was, we were all just really close as we've gotten older, you know, and I have in-laws and my family has grown and we have big extended Thanksgivings. That's true. But even for my children, uh, because, because of the nature of the way our family has grown, there's, there's a, this mixture of joy, regret, sadness, grief, all mixed in together and it can become complicated. And maybe this year will be the first time that your child has two Thanksgivings and two Christmases because mom and dad aren't together anymore. Or maybe they're used to that. And maybe there's multiple step parents that are involved. And all of that is complex and it's confusing. But be able to draw your kid back to, I know our families change. I know things are different. But Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And let's be thankful for him. So I think that is great advice to Heidi. Just be great. Let's be grateful. Just be grateful for what are we glad about this year. But in particular, you as the parent, try and draw them back to Jesus. You know, I'm grateful for the food. Isn't it great that God made food taste good? He didn't have to make food taste good. The only purpose of food is to fuel our bodies. We could just be eating those horrible protein shakes all the time. But God made 
bacon and God, God made yams and God made, you know, it's like all these. And so point it back to Jesus and all these different things. So I think that's huge. And we do hope that maybe you sit down and you take some time out and just watch a movie with your family. You're going to have lots of time together, play a game with your family. And we think the Toy Story movies would be great. So we have now entered into Sawyer's favorite part. I don't think Sawyer has ever been more excited for any episode ever. He just gets to talk about Toy Story for a while. So I'm going to open up to Sawyer. Sawyer, tell us what you love about any Toy Story movie or all the Toy Story movies. Okay. So this, I, I have to like be disciplined because I could literally go for like two hours. So like, I have to like, try and be decisive the main thing with toy story is it like followed me through my life is the thing you know i was not alive when the first one came out okay but it like preceded as as, you into this life exactly it knew that i was that i was gonna happen when when john lasseter decided to make the first toy story is the thing okay and it came out and uh what year was it? When, was it 95? It's 95. So were, yeah. were, were, were you born in 96? Yeah, I was born in 96. You might have been conceived at the at, 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 right. at Wild Toy Story. So maybe it's from... No, Nathan. No, no. Oh, we Let's can't go back. Do I need to explain Let's how conception happens? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> does does anyone practicing. want me to bring those yeah. charts out from a few He's weeks ago? He's still practicing, yeah. <laughs> um, no, I... Nathan I, made a PowerPoint. <laughs> yeah, I... But let, me, I let me share my screen. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> when when I was a kid, the first two were almost on constant repeat. I owned both of them on VHS, and I I literally would watch them monthly. Like them and The Lion King were the were like I was watching them at least once a month. Um, and when the third one came out, I was in what well, that was my was that two thousand ten? I think two thousand nine, right? Maybe two thousand ten. Let me look. Either way, I was in like middle school and I remember I, up to that point, I had never been so excited for a movie. And like, I was getting into the age of my life where like, I thought it was edgy to like kid movies or like, I thought it was weird when like someone my age liked a kid movie. I couldn't contain myself. I was like, this is Toy Story 3. We're, we're going to like, I'm going to lose it in this theater. And it was amazing. Um, but it was also um, very um, emotional. It like, it was a lot for me to handle at the time. I was like, I don't get this because I was barely understanding what emotions were at that point. And then when Toy Story 4 came out, I I've told this story off air. Like me and th my two best friends went and saw it on opening night. It was the three of us and then a bunch of moms and their kids. And they're like the three of us are in the middle of the theater. We're crying near the end. And like everyone else is just having a good old time. But there's three college age dudes that are just like crying in the middle of toy story four and uh yeah oh my gosh like i said this this franchise has followed me throughout my life it goes with me everywhere um the characters are just so he good. is talking about the toy story movies as i had just described jesus christ yeah. <laughs> goes with the edge of life changes your life <laughs> Well, but Toy Life Story might is, change, but Toy Story is exactly. constant. Toy Story Through is constant. Life. Okay, Through all ages. Let's sit this. Don't don't talk about that. What you think for Jesus? Death, what are you thankful for for Toy Story? Woody, Thank you, Pixar. Woody is basically, like my my actual dad. Woody is my actual. The dad. lists are the same. The yeah. I the met your actual dad. I apologize to him on your behalf. <laughs> oh, but yeah, uh, Toy Story. Uh, probably my. Probably my second or third favorite like franchise of movies, you know. It, this like, is so how excited Sawyer is about Toy Story. I asked him to say why he loved it. He has not said anything about any of the movies. He's literally you're 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 acting like the seven year old that I go. Why do you like Toy Story? And you're just going best, 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 best. <laughs> best, okay. best. okay, I'll get technical. It sh it's literally like some of the best animation ever. At each like each one that comes out is the best animated movie. Like of in history, in terms of the animation that you're watching, when Toy but see Story now I gotta know what's you said like second or third. Like he's this ramped it's, up about it, but it's second or third on his list. Star so. Wars will always be number one. Star <laughs> okay, Wars will gotcha. always be number one. But All Toy right. Story, Toy Story, and Lord of the Rings are duking it out for number two. Um, but but Toy Story, oh my gosh! So you've got the characters. The characters are some, some of the best characters of all time, most iconic. 
Um, between Second Woody and Buzz, especially, huh? Second or third best of all time. No, no, I would put them at like one or maybe two. Again, Star Wars is up there, but Woody and Buzz alone are just so ingrained and so good. Um, like I said, the animation, the stories that each one tells, each one feels necessary to where the last one ended, which is not something that you can say about most franchises that have 10 or 15 year gaps between each entry. That is not common. You know, each one feels like it actually has something to say, both about the world that it comes out in and in response to the previous entry. They are three, they are four perfect movies. Okay. I like some of them better than I like others, but all four of them are perfect movies. There's nothing wrong with any of them. That's the weirdest statement ever. Four perfect movies. T- top of the case. Some are better than others. No, I said I like second some. And their second or third. I like some. Their second than and others. third best perfect movies. Nothing should change. I, I, nothing I should, should change. Again, nothing could improve they, it. Except if they could be Star nothing Wars or it. Lord of the Rings. <laughs> They might be better than Star Wars is the thing. I, I, uh, I, I'm, I'm not Lucas that objective that. About, about those movies that I love that much, okay? I, I can't be that objective. It's just st- Toy Story is perfect, okay? It's perfect. I don't know well, what We're out of time, so I don't have time for <laughs> Donnie. Donnie. We don't have time to talk about any of the actual movies. <laughs> we don't have time to talk about the movie, but these are best and, and most important. So, oh, Sawyer. I loved your energy on that. That was good energy, man. That, that that brought it back up from all the sad stuff we were saying earlier. So that's good. All right, uh, Donnie, why don't you tell us, man? What uh, which I, I'm not even going to ask Sawyer which are the best or his ranking because or which one he watched <laughs> or, or what's even yeah. happening. Two, he, one, he's the only four, person on the three. podcast who watched all four movies in preparation of the yeah, podcast. Right. All right, Donnie. Uh, why don't you talk about uh, the Toy Story franchise or why you think families would enjoy watching these movies? I think um, kind of uh, in a way uh, what what Sawyer was alluding to. and those, Yeah, bring that all back into excitement. something. <laughs> I'm just saying. And it's excitement. You know, there is some truth in how well these movies capture time periods and mm. accurate emotion. Like in, in particular, in, like the age of the characters, like exactly. not not the Toy Story, but like Andy, that age of like parenting those kind of kids. Exactly, and like, and you get to see that, but you also get to see the dynamics of how relationships are because you know when you have someone new coming to your life and all this stuff, and there's so many, so many moving parts that they they age really well because mm-hmm. the themes in the movies are timeless, yeah. which makes the characters feel very timeless. That's good, Donnie. That's really good. Sawyer, do you agree? I just need a yes or no. We can't. Yep. Okay. <laughs> very good. Very good. Heidi Cooper, um, you were saying you watched Toy Story 2, which just so you know, and I heard Sawyer give his ranking, 2143. Um, I agree. I agree with that ranking. I just think our degrees of what where they are. I think it's 2, 1, 3, 4. So you can't even see four. It's down. It's it's two, one, three, four, three. Like like they're, they're literally like maybe an inch separated from me. I don't think any of them are bad movies, but uh, we'll we'll get to my thoughts in a moment. But Heidi, you watched two, is that correct? Yes. Just so you know, that's the best one. That's the best one. Yes, so. that's what I've heard, and I was not disappointed at all. It was so cute, and I loved like it was from 1999, and so there was like some kind of throwback stuff, you know, like maybe even now I was thinking like, Oh, I wonder if that would be okay that they, you know, like they put like a far East air or something like that. The name name of the company that was going to be flying into Japan or whatever. And I was like, Oh, I don't know that that's uh, okay to call it that anymore or whatever. But I just thought it was really cute and clever. And like the characters, Heidi is canceling toy story. You're canceling toy story. Yes. (laughs) um yeah so i think um yeah all of it i mean the backstory to it and then like the uh the the other buzz that was so cute oh yes just so you know that that bit gets repeated in almost every one of the movies i don't think four has it but has something kind of similar in that duke kaboom is basically the new buzz Lightyear. but 
that that bit about him uh, having the new one come in. In the third one, they factory reset him, but put him on Spanish language, and so he's just speaking Spanish the whole time. And they have a whole uh, they have a whole you've got a friend in me, but in Spanish. In Spanish, okay, yeah, I need to watch that. It's one it's it's uh, it, it is one I of the funniest the jokes. rankings off completely. Because, I think I used you know. to say that three was my least, but I think four has is it's just the more I talk about, it, I need to go back and watch it. I've only seen four like twice, uh, but um, I, I three has some really just all really good stuff. So uh, I will say this about them: my kids have watched them all, and I think we we probably annually watch them at least the first two. Um, similar to Sawyer, I grew up. I think Toy Story one is the first movie I saw in theaters. Uh, I think it was, I would have been five or six when it came out. I remember going with my dad uh, on Thursdays. That was it used to be his off day, and he would take us individually out to do stuff. And he knew I loved movies. So he took me to see Toy Story at the Dollar Theater in Fayetteville. And so I loved it. Toy Story 2, I was like nine or so, 10 when it came out. And then Toy Story 3 came out the summer, at, the first summer my wife and I were married. And we went and watched that together. And we both are like, when they reach out to hold hands and they're going into the incinerator, we were like, oh, that's just the saddest thing. Like just totally, totally losing our minds. Um, and then Toy Story 4, we went to see... And I believe, I may be wrong about this. I'll ask this. Heidi, I think your daughter was with us. I think Toy Story 4, I think we went and saw, I know she went with us to see the Lego movie too. Um, Cause that was when your youngest son was in the hospital and y'all were oh, saying, yeah. and we would babysit Elena for you. And I think she went with us to see this one as well. And um, it was really sweet. Cause now I had a kid of my own and, you know, we're kind of sitting there and I'm now watching it as an adult. So I would say this about the Toy Story movies. I think they are <laughs> they're like a miracle. They're like a ma- they're like a magic trick. And here's what I mean. They're not the funniest animated movies. They're not the saddest animated movies. They're not the most sentimental animated movies. But there is something about the chemistry between the characters, how simple the storytelling is, um how charming it is that especially by the end of Toy Story 2, I wouldn't even say it's like an emotional gut punch. You feel so good. I can see, and I joke about it, I can see that for a 26-year-old man, why these would be nostalgia films. How you would look back and it's like, oh, this is a simpler time, you know, and all these kind of things. I can totally get all that vibe off of them. Uh, I think they're absolutely... I think, like, it's universal that everybody had a toy, you know? Like, we can all, you know, remember our favorite toy and, like, how... Or teddy bear or something. Because you have this emotional attachment to them. And that we like at some point, like maybe thought about or imagined it being alive or pretended like it was alive and things like that. So I think that's why it's just like it, you can't go wrong, you know, well, <laughs> like everybody can enjoy it. And just like we've been talking about on this podcast, you're aware that you remember what it was like to become too cool for your toy. You remember what it was like to kind of move past it and you grow. And then you have this moment where your kids, have a teddy bear or have a toy and you become very protective of that favorite toy. You know what I mean? Like my daughter has a teddy bear that she's had since she was not born. I think we gave it to her around six months or so. Cause you know, now you're not supposed to put teddy bears and stuff in the crib with them and stuff. So she had it somewhere around at least one year old. And she is like emotionally attached to this. And I, as the dad, I'm like, we're leaving the cruise ship. And I'm like, did we get the teddy bear? Did we get the teddy bear? It was like, and I think it really does, like you said, it's this nostalgic thing when you're watching it, but it also becomes just this, you understand that those bonds, there's something about them that it's not about the toy. It reminds you of what it was to be young and be with your parents. It reminds you of what it was to now be an adult and to have a child. And it, and it connects you in this way, I think is really good. And so we just said, when we said, hey, we're going to do feel good family movies, all of us were kind of like, well, we should just do Toy Story then. We should just talk about Toy Story. And we all just kind of like inherently get it. And I think if if your family hasn't watched them, this would be a great time to introduce them. But even more, if your family has watched them, this holiday season is a time, just watch them again. Because it's a time everyone gets nostalgic and you just will have that feeling of being a family. You can have these conversations that matter. So uh, this this nerd fest did not go on as long as I thought it would. But uh, Sawyer covered up the enthusiasm for all of us. So Sawyer, any last thing you want to add here before we jump off? 
I mean, <clears throat> I, I legitimately don't think that there is a better family movie than any Toy Story movie. I, I, I think I, I can land safely. Like, Toy Story is as good as it can possibly get for watching a movie with your family. If you have a teenager that doesn't like Toy Story, I don't know what to do for your teenager because they're they're in trouble. Well, there may be a point where your your teenager um your your doesn't, but that's part of the change, right? Exactly. You as a parent have exactly. to you're dealing with the change because I can see there probably definitely was a time when I was 17 that was like, this is stupid. Uh oh, but I can see Maybe. now everybody everybody now is totally different than it was when i was a teenager there ain't no way i would ever gone to a theater at 16 to see an animated movie but kids are different now as i've said all the time teenagers are weird man they're just weird and uh, like sawyer said there's not a better movie than this it's at least number two or three <laughs> so we'll end it there toy story franchise best thing if you count it in the threes so uh we will end there hopefully you guys have a great uh rest of your holiday season and most importantly that you just Talk to your kids, have great time building memories and teach them to love Jesus and his way of life. And we'll see you next time.